Four. <laughs> <laughs> Mabuhay! She's M. She's C. And we're Pinoy, Pinoy Chopsticks. So for this vlog, we're going to talk about the five things you need to do immediately upon arriving in China. So these are the things you need to do if you're here on a work visa, not a tourist visa. You're not here to tour, but you're here to work. So you finally got your dream job in China! Woo! <laughs> but shocked by the toilet situation. But that's for another vlog. Mm -hmm. So when you get here, the first thing that you absolutely have to do first is register at the nearest police station in 24 hours. So the, the, the police station nearest your apartment. So of course, these are for the people who already have an apartment, like maybe even before coming here, maybe you lease an apartment or if you immediately get an apartment. But if you're staying in a hotel for a few days, uh, like sorting things out, the hotel is going to register for you. But you have to remember that you're eventually going to do this. So these are the things you need to bring to register at the police station. So first is your passport with visa. Second is your rental or lease agreement. Third, it's going to you need a copy of, of your a copy of your landlord's Chinese national ID as well as your landlord's proof of ownership. Remember, registering at your local police station is very important because you need the registration form in order to process your work permit at the Entry and Exit Bureau here in China. The second thing you need to do is go to the Entry and Exit Bureau to get your work permit. So you don't usually do this alone, you do this with a Chinese one of the Chinese staff from your company who's going to register you first online and then after that you're going to go together to the bureau for personal appearance. Don't worry about the requirements. They're going to... Your company's you gonna ask you to provide whatever you need to provide yeah. and they're gonna go with you to the exit and entry bureau. Number three, get a SIM card. So there are three major telecommunications company here. Um, China Telecom, China Mobile, and China Unicom. I don't know if there are any others. Please comment down below if you know of any other companies, but those are the three major ones. Can you guess what you need to get a SIM card? Of course, your passport. You need your passport to process everything here in China. Pretty much everything. Back home in the Philippines, we don't really need our passports to buy a SIM card. Um, well, if you're gonna get a postpaid, postpaid SIM card, you need an ID, but we, do, we don't really use our passports. But here, they use their China Chinese national ID to get, a, to get a SIM card if you're a local. And for foreigners, you need your passport. Now, back in our old job, um, when we first got our, our SIM card, there was a Chinese teacher who helped us get our sim card because we, she under used, her name yeah under her name so we just pay her we, we paid her around 60 60 kwai yeah and then but here in the, when we moved to our new school to our new company we were the ones who registered for our registered our sim card so we got we were our, able, our sim we cards are in our names our passports so we don't know what the policy is in each province but of course uh, it varies the only um, the only similar factor is you need your passport. Sometimes you get deals or promos wherein you buy a SIM card and then you get a free internet connection at home. You can choose from a wide variety of uh, choices, ranging from prices. Yeah, prices from 38 RMB up to 100 RMB. Or more, depending or more. on what you need. Interesting fact. A colleague of ours, an ex-colleague of ours, told us that if you get numbers that have 6, 8, or 9 in them, they are more expensive. Mm -hmm. So we chose um, numbers that th didn't have any of those numbers. If you so, have 4. <laughs> if you have 4, I think that's cheaper. So we got ours for a much cheaper price. That was, in our, first, that was our first SIM card. So imagine if you have number 66666 or 888888899 number. That will cost thousands, I bet. Four, open a bank account. But you have to remember, if you don't have a Chinese SIM card, 
you cannot open a bank account. This is because some banks uh, will sometimes send you security codes in order to confirm your identity. Another thing is because um, if you don't have a SIM card, you won't be able to use their online services and their apps. We found a very informative and interesting website, uh, an article about opening, opening uh, bank, bank accounts, accounts in China if you're a foreigner. Yeah, so we're going to put it, the link down below so you can read more about opening bank accounts. Mm. Number five, get a bus card or a metro card. Now, if you're a foreigner and you're not planning on getting an e-bike, which, which a lot of foreigners do, I have one, getting a bus card or a metro card is way cheaper than paying cash when you get on the bus or when you're going on the subway. Based on our experience, we paid 20 RMB for the card, plus you have to put credit on it, maybe like around 50, 100 RMB. Depends on you. Some banks also have cards that you can use on the subway. I have a friend who has um, a debit card and she uses it on the subway, but she can't use it on the bus. So you can ask somebody local about this. You can also download an app wherein you can put credit in it and then you can use it to pay the bus fare. But you cannot use that for the metro or subway. Yes. Um, I also saw, recently I saw um, QR codes on the subway where you can just scan it using WeChat, I think, or some other app and you can pay using your phone. Just something I noticed though, uh, at this point, it's 2019, everybody uses their phones for everything, buying stuff, online shopping, paying, paying the bills. So I feel like getting a bus card or a metro card is probably going to be obsolete in the next, I don't know, decade. <laughs> And we're just gonna use our phones. So, but at this point, um, you can still buy bus cards or metro cards, and I still advise people to do this. So that's it. The five things you need to do upon arriving in China. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can email us at pinoychopsticks2019 at gmail.com, or you can comment down below. Down below. Please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Bye.